but I think I was a natural citizen. My high school education was extraordinarily good. My, my grandfather started a club that collected money for uh, soldiers in World War II. He was too old to be in the service. Uh, my father was very active. He had been in World War I as an officer, so he was recalled for World War II. And my mother had uh, decided that she wanted to make her contribution, so she went to work for the Red Cross. And I was left alone because I'm an only child. So I decided that uh, I would list, enlist so that I could also participate in the struggle for World War II. This is 1942. That's a hell of a long time ago. <laughs> uh, my, my first real job in World War II was to take 123 enlisted men from the south part of our country to the north part of Britain uh, so they could be assigned to combat units. I already had a job. Uh, I didn't know about it yet, but I was whisked to uh, an, an, air, an army base near Paris where I was put in charge of building radio stations in France and Germany. As the troops advanced, we would send weather, local weather back to England so the 5th and 8th Air Forces could bomb better. So I thought that was a, a a very useful and interesting job. And it was also behind the lines. <laughs> so I was very conscious of the fact that I was an only child and I didn't want my mother to worry unnecessarily. So I turned down opportunities to fly because I thought that was really too dangerous. Uh, she would worry constantly about me. But when I got my after I got my commission and after uh, World War II, as an officer, I could not refuse any order, and they ordered me to do flight training. <laughs> so uh, that's how I got into uh, flying F-94s, which is an all-weather night fighter. And uh, so actually, I did not fly combat in Korea. Uh, I was kept back in the New York area to fly close to the fence to make sure that some of these unidentified aircraft that were approaching New York were allies, friends. You know. So my job was to go out and shoot them down if they weren't friends. <laughs> and I did that about 200 times. I, I, lost, I lost one friend because when he ejected from his plane, uh, cut his knees off and that's one reason why I have a, a handicap now is because I was I was too big for that airplane so I was always pushing myself back in the seat you know so if I had to eject at least my knees would be clear <laughs> of, the, of the aircraft you know? so uh, unfortunately all of my military Health records were lost in a fire. It was a big, big fire that affected a lot of veterans like me. So when I'm here, I often have a, a, a co-payment because they don't know if, if I deserve this treatment or not. So, but I'm so glad to have come back <laughs> twice <laughs> that I don't fuss about it. My name is Courtney Harris. I'm one of the nurse practitioners. I've been working at the Chattanooga Clinic for three years. Uh, I've been an RN for a total of 10 years and a nurse practitioner for about eight years. So nursing has always been my passion and that is why I wanted to work at the Chattanooga VA Clinic. I want to be able to help uh, the community and help serve the veterans. I love when Mr. Burris comes in the clinic. Um, he is so funny. Um, he's, he's a talker. 
Um, he, I love uh, listening to his past stories and his current stories and what's been going on with him in his life. That I, the, the quality of care that he gets is just fantastic. I know that they're here looking out for him, wanting the best. They send him emails, you know, they'll, they'll send phone calls, get stuff in the mail. Uh, it's just, uh, it's wonderful. It's such, I know that he, he's earned it, uh, you know, through his years of service, but it is a really wonderful benefit that he has enjoyed. Oh, everybody is very friendly, and when you come in, you're seen promptly, and uh, you get very specific directions on where to go and what to do. I, I don't know why a vet, a vet would be hesitant to come other than just maybe not knowing, not knowing what it's like, you know. You know, there, there is a small copay that he pays when he goes to, you know, but it's very small. It's, you know, it's un unbelievably generous. I, I would just say give it a shot. I'm sure that there's lots of brochures. I, I walk past pamphlets when we walked in. Um, you can go online, you can probably call if, you know, whatever, come in person and talk. I just think that it's, it's there, you've earned it, it's for you and there's a just group of people ready to help. So just, just give them a shot and you'll be happy you did. I'm extremely fortunate to survive two wars and come back practically unscathed, you know. And I'm, so I'm, I'm grateful to the VA. I, I think it's a marvelous institution. And uh, I would encourage all veterans to to sign up, to make, to put themselves available to the VA as, as patients because the VA wants to help. And I think the more, the more they can do, the more they will do.